Good evening, folks. It's meteorologist DT with our Sunday evening, early Monday morning Florence update. I know I wanted to get this out about two hours ago, but I was so tired. I had to take a nap and just get it out of the house. It was just suffering burnout. So let's get right to it. Lots to talk about here. And again, I apologize for getting this up later than I thought it was going to be. All right, we'll start out here taking a look at the uh, 5 p.m. advisor. You can see uh, it's now way to the south of Bermuda. There's the official track, and it takes it up into, as you can see, uh, North Carolina. Uh, very close to Raleigh, between Raleigh and Charlotte here. That's the 5 o'clock advisor. That's not really a surprise. And they do make it a major hurricane, of course. Um, the 11 o'clock advisory is very much unchanged, as you can see. Almost no change whatsoever. The latest satellite picture, this is one from uh, this afternoon at uh, around 5 p.m. East, Eastern time. And to see the two white towers there, this is really the intensifying convection bubbling up here and here. And obviously, there's some sort of coral eye trying to form there. And a very, very impressive system. Now you can see the eye definitely has formed right here. You can see the eye is right in there. So there you go. It is now probably a category. Um, if it isn't a category two hurricane, it probably will be shortly. 11 o'clock advisory had up to 90, so it's a borderline category two. If you look at the intensity, all the models, uh, a lot of them bring it up to category four. Uh, others keep it a category three and two. So there's big, they notice there's a big split here in the cluster. You've got this group in here and then this group in here. So it's, uh, you know, not at all certainty it's going to reach category four. The other thing is, of course, the arrival of the winds. I get asked that. When do the winds come in? Or what's going to happen with the winds? So this is a really interesting graph. So let's spend a minute talking about this. Now, down here at the bottom, on the bottom right corner, I'll make sure I can... I push this up, you can see it a little bit. There you go. Um, you can see that uh, this is the percentages. So the orange is 70%, the brown is 80%, so on and so forth. So this all purple stuff in here is not 100% probability. What this is showing is that by Thursday morning, tropical storm force winds uh, along Wilmington, example, right in here, have a, a 70, have a 90 percent to 100 percent chance of, of taking place. By Thursday morning, already into central North Carolina, past Raleigh, almost up to the Virginia North Carolina border, a 70 percent chance. And then southern Virginia, including Hampton Roads and up towards Richmond, close to Roanoke, Lynchburg, then out towards uh, Hickory in North Carolina. All that area that's in the orange has a 50 to 60 percent chance of saying 30 mile, 39 mile an hour winds or greater, 39 to 72 miles an hour in that area. So that's how you can see it. And again, we can enlarge this a little bit, which I did, so you can see a little more clear. And you can see again the poor the probabilities are. So by Thursday evening, right in here, Richmond has, if you for example, if you're in Richmond, had the orange area. Is got about 60% chance of seeing, um, about 60% chance of seeing uh, tropical storm force winds uh, by Thursday evening, and you can see 70% on North Carolina Virginia border by uh, Thursday evening or Thursday afternoon, and so on and so forth. So this is a pretty useful map. Now the other thing I want to point out is that how badly the GFS has been performing. This was the GFS from early Sunday morning. I posted this map a couple times. Now this is just bullshit. Now this gets a lot of attention in the with a lot of weather weenies and, and nuts who don't know what they're talking about. A lot of TV stations. This is a severe hurricane. This is a Category Five on the GF. This is from Sunday morning. Okay. Now there has never, ever, ever been a Category Five hurricane over Cape Hatteras since it was settled by the white man in the 15 or 1600s. It's never happened, ever, at any time in history. So. That's bullshit. So that's what, but it gets a lot of media attention. And of course, the problem is, as I posted on this early Sunday morning, the model has very little rain in North Carolina or, 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 or Northeast North Carolina or Southeast Virginia, which makes no sense. What the GFS, which is doing is wrong, is first, the GFS here, it's not ocean coupled. What do I mean by ocean coupled? Ocean coupled, just like it sounds, like, like a, couple there you go most of the good models like the european recognize that the ocean and the atmosphere are linked and that they especially the hurricane the hurricane feeds off the ocean the ocean enhances the hurricane it's a it's a symbiotic relationship the gfs model does not recognize that it's not ocean coupled 
So it almost sees a hurricane like this as some sort of coastal storm or a storm in the North Atlantic. And that causes problems here because this is what happens. This image shows wind shear. All right, and this was some valid early Sunday morning. This is valid uh, Thursday night, okay, at 8 p.m. Now this is this right here. This is um, this is Florence. Now you see the blue, the green stuff here. That green stuff is 30 to 35, 40 knots of shear. Now that means that the winds are blowing across the top of the hurricane and should weaken the hurricane as it approaches the North Carolina coast. But as we just saw, and we saw here. Uh, Instead, the GFS develops it into a Category 5 hurricane. This cannot be. This is just a deeply flawed model. You can't have that sort of wind shear in Category 5. Now, the problem is, is that what happens is that the GFS sees those winds as aiding the system because it almost doesn't view it as a tropical storm or a hurricane. It sees it as some sort of coastal low, like a nor'easter. So these winds uh, cause the precipitation to become enhanced as a coastal storm what well, in the weather business we call it causes a difluence aloft and that enhances the low pressure of the surface very technical term the point is that the GFS here has a flaw those winds should knock the storm down and instead it strengthens it this makes no sense at all so it's why I've been rejecting the GFS for a long long time let me give an example here this is the GFS uh, plot from early Sunday morning notice how so many of them are bending it off the coast see how many of them are doing that all right, that's fine. But this is the hurricane models. And you can see on 12Z, this is this afternoon. And you can see none of them are taking it off the coast. We're not seeing this. Oops. Notice the difference between that and that. Big difference. Now, at the end of the models here from early from Sunday afternoon, notice that some of them are kind of bending a little bit into southeast Virginia. Okay, that's an interesting trend. But here's the 18Z. Notice we no longer have that bend. Everything is going right into North Carolina. That's what the European model has been showing. And here's another example of how bad the GFS model is. This is the new and improved GFS version over here. Okay, this is the old one right here. And you can see it's got this huge hurricane off the coast. Okay, this is the G new GFS improved version called the FV3. And notice it's got landfall at Wilmington, just like the European. There you go. So even the experimental updated version of the GFS doesn't agree with it. It's just different. Now, finally, this afternoon at 18Z, yay, yay, the 18Z GFS has a clue, actually has landfall at Wilmington as a 946 hurricane. Very possible, a very reasonable solution. I mean, finally. Now, this is 114 hours out. And the Europeans have been showing this for days. Okay, great. Glad to see the GFS is on board. Now, why? What's the difference? Okay, well, let's take a look at it. This is the uh, Sunday afternoon 500 millibar map from the 18Z GFS. Again, the ridge is the important thing. Not the models, the ridge. The models, how they handle the ridge, the ridge is what's important. Here, see the line? Goes almost all the way to Virginia Beach. Okay? That's what forces it to this direction. This right here. See that? Okay, good. If we compare that to previous runs, this is valid for Wednesday evening. 8 p.m. Here we go. This was early Sunday morning. Look at the ridges. Nowhere near the same. This is valid the same time, 8 p.m. Wednesday, but the ridge is here. Not here. Here. Big difference. And as a result, the GFS screws things up. And we can look even here. This is um, uh, where this is from. Uh, uh, when was this from? This is uh, 78. Now we can see the 18Z again. You can see how powerful the ridge is here very very powerful sticks it all the way into the virginia coast that way and that's what forces it. this is what the europeans are doing let's take a look europeans have been doing this for days there it is on the european showing that for for four or five runs already only if now is the gfs finally showing that when it used to be showing this and this just big differences hey right, here's the european i showed this earlier uh we you can see make a landfall at wilmington it tracks between uh, Charlotte and uh, and Raleigh. Here's Charlotte. Here's Raleigh, and then it goes up in the southeast Virginia and it dies. And as a result, we end up getting torrential rainfalls, which you can see here. Now the black line here, this is State 95 approximately. So what this is saying is that Richmond, 
okay five six inches of rain Hampton Roads not that bad Northeast North Carolina the flooding not that bad the Delmarva New Jersey DC so so pretty wet especially west of DC but mainly over the Virginia Piedmont look at these humongous rains in here some of this stuff is 25 inches of rain Lynchburg Charlotte Raleigh Greensboro Hendersonville uh, Danville Martinsville South Boston Farmville um, Charlottesville Lexington Harrisonburg uh, Culpeper all of these areas are run the risk of seeing disastrous flooding now what this means is that if you live near a creek if you live near an area where the roads wash out you'd need to prepare for the fact these roads could stay flooded for a long period of time so you need to keep that in consideration if you need to get in and out of your house even if your house is safe but the roads around you are cut off or blocked by high water to flooding rains and flooding rising tides and flooding waters spilling out of the creeks and rivers that's gonna cut you off you need to keep that in mind you need to keep these things active it's not just that your particular house is on a hill or doesn't flood but what about the roads around you all right now this is the afternoon European ensemble now here the European ensemble has two distinct clusters let's take a look at this carefully so I large so we can see this very nicely notice we have a cluster right in here see this cluster here that another cluster right here see that so we have two different solutions most of the data favors this one Fran but there is a cluster which has making it landfall in Isabel like 2003 so let's call these two different scenarios the Fran track and the Isabel track okay those are our two different scenarios we're working with now this was Hurricane Fran in case you forgot what it looked like you can see it went along north of the Bahamas and then made landfall at Wilmington. And then you can see it passed over Lynchburg and Roanoke. That's what Fran did. Well to the west of Richmond. And because it was so far to the west, the winds and the heavy rain in southeast Virginia and Richmond was very non-existent. It was not a big deal. This is a landfall close up. You can see Wilmington. It was a 954 millibar category 3 hurricane at Wilmington. And this is what the rainfall looked like. Very similar to this. The difference is that here, Fran kept moving. Here, system stalls. But it's the same sort of rainfall. Look how light the rain was over Hampton Roads in northeast North Carolina. So there you go. Now we saw that was the European solution. We saw that. So, um, and we can see, in fact, the European model is very similar. So that's why I presented this again. You can see it goes up, takes a Fran track, and uh, it, but it, then it dies over southwest Virginia, and we get this horrendous rainfall uh, and, and catastrophic flooding. So here, let's talk about this image for a second. Now, later on, I will post this more detail so you can take a look at it and see what the breakdown is. But let's follow this carefully. Okay. The red area, right here, the red area, See this red area? That's where you're going to see the highest winds in the storm surge. The biggest impact directly from the hurricane. Wham! Wilmington, southeast North Carolina. The green area represents the area where you're not going to see the biggest winds, but the heaviest rains. All in this area, the green area. Okay, that's where you're going to see your worst rains by far. Now, the purple area is a transition area. Here you're going to see some areas of strong winds and a lot of rain. Not as much rain as the green areas but some decent rain nonetheless, several inches in here, and you will see some strong gusty winds. Now the orange area in this track, which includes eastern Virginia, Hampton Roads, east of Richmond, Middle Peninsula, Northern Neck, Chesapeake Bay, Norfolk, Virginia Beach, Suffolk, okay, Lower Virginia Eastern Shore, Salisbury, Patuxent River, St. Mary's. Some rain, some wind, not a big deal if this track is correct. All right. Now, the, this area here in light blue, this area all in here, this shows you on the back side of the system significant rain and some moderate minor winds, but not a big deal. And the brown stuff here, this represents this general rain fall about as far, with not a lot of wind, about as far as you can get from the system. And, you know, um, once the system was inland, the, the, the pressure will come rapidly. The eastern side of the system will collapse, so you will not see the really high winds in Hampton Roads. We did not see that with Fran here. Oops. And we're not and not a lot of rain and the yeah, along Hampton Roads right in this area, not a lot of rain there. 
And this sort of scenario with Fran is the same sort of thing here. Some wind, some rain, east of Richmond into eastern Virginia, northeast North Carolina, but not a big deal. All right, this is the Isabel track from 2003. I'm sure many of you recall that track. Now here, notice what happened. Isabel did not make landfall here, but made it over here. Big difference. And as a result, the core, the low, when it made inland, passed just south of Richmond, near Petersburg, and not by Dinwoody and Farmville. And that caused a lot more devastation, a lot higher winds. We can see the track here on September 16, 19, 2003. And of course, Richmond actually had a wind gust to 90 miles an hour, believe it or not, at one point. And they were uh, uh, 75 miles an hour, and they were 90 mile an hour wind gusts in much of Hampton Roads. And not surprisingly, the rain was further to the east. Well, obviously, it makes sense. So if we look at the Isabel track, here what happens is we have the red area. This is the highest winds and the highest rain. This would be Hampton Roads and east to northeast of North Carolina. This is a little different than the, than the Fran track, which is down here. So the big red area, that's where you see most damage. Now up here, you would see moderate rain, moderate wind, up all Jersey, up to New York City, Philadelphia, Baltimore, the northern Delmarva. And then the purple area is a transition area. Pretty good rain, significant rain, high winds, possibly up to hurricane force gusts in the purple area. That would include Richmond and Raleigh and the middle peninsula on northern neck. And the green area is, of course, the big rains in this area here. This is where the winds are dropped down considerably, but then the system is trapped and it just rains and it rains and it rains and you still get your 12 to 25 inches of rain. And the brown stuff represents the outside uh, light to moderate rain around the edge of the storm. So uh, that's the... Uh, you know that's my discussion that's my report here I will post these maps in more detail on the website on the Facebook page of what I think the two scenarios look like and what they might mean but if I spent all time writing this out this video would never get done so I'll post that later on this morning and you can take a look at that in more detail this is meteorologist DT from weather risk I'll probably do another video midday tomorrow afternoon as we get closer to the event I'll talk to you soon and then I'll see you over on the Facebook page and on the Twitter page.